Okay, good afternoon. Um, yeah, so it's a nice little segue, right? Uh, I'm from UC Berkeley, and uh, one of the things that we are uh, doing is looking at location-aware uh, networks and sensors. And uh, the reason that we're doing that is precisely for, for this sort of stuff. Now, we're looking more on the hospital campus scale rather than sort of the regional or a national scale. So uh, it's a little bit different, but we can talk a little bit about it. So anyway, there are three areas that I'm going to discuss which are related to things you've heard so far today. One is basically uh, location-aware wireless networks. And this is a device that we're developing now uh, that, to do that. Sir. Oh, sorry. OK, so anyway, um, so this is this device that we're working on. And uh, the idea behind this is to be able to track devices in real time in a large space, like a hospital or you know, a campus, and uh, be able to give you sort of meter level or at least room level accuracy. Uh, turns out a meter gives you about room level accuracy. So uh, that's one of the things that we're, we're really interested in looking at and seeing how it could apply well to the healthcare setting. Another thing that we heard uh, from Dr. Bacci is sort of inertial sensing sort of issues, you know, detecting acceleration and rotation and these sorts of things. And this is a device that we developed, and I know that we're planning on actually talking with Dr. Bacci sometime soon about this, but it's similar to the platform she's talking about, except drastically lower power and higher capability, just because we've developed new technology. So one of the things that we're doing, uh, and this is in Chris Peaster's group at Berkeley mostly, is we're interested in, in high reliability network, high, high, reli high security networking, and also sort of sensing and developing platforms that are useful for these sorts of technologies. And then if you tie all this together, how you could possibly in the future actually wirelessly monitor patients at home or elsewhere. So in location-aware wireless networks, one of the things that we are very interested in being able to do is just locate these objects in a couple of seconds. I want to know where you know, my, uh, apparently, anecdotally, we hear just knowing where like the IV drip stand is located is a big deal because you get to charge more money you know, when, or something. And uh, so uh, what we're, you know, just being able to tag these devices and uh, tell you where they are quickly is something that we're, we're very interested in doing, and doing it in a matter that's secure and, and useful to you. Uh, and so this is a diagram of wireless network that's actually in a health clinic. And uh, so to give you an idea of the scales, we're talking about you know, hundreds of meters uh, indoors, being able to tell you where things are and relay data uh, over that network. So why, right? I just said asset management. Now, assets are, of course, in different categories, right? There's equipment, which we discussed, but the true asset of most hospitals is probably the personnel. And uh, knowing where your people are is, is, uh, is always important. And then maybe also you want to know where your patients are, too. But uh, I, I think that you know, people generally have maybe a bit of a hard time with the concept that we'll be tracking their locations. But uh, it, can be, it can be very effective for increasing uh, efficiency, which comes down to something that we need to deal with, which is reducing our cost of care. So we're interested in trying to apply these technologies that we've got into your settings, but, um, you know, collaborations are required to do that. So monitoring patients, it's exactly what you've heard. Uh, now, just talking with people, we understand that when uh, people are, uh, can, can be monitored, we can, you can, this activity monitoring can be used to look at the response to medication uh, and um, as, as an indication of problems and also detecting uh, problems with the elderly, wherever they are. Because of this wireless capabilities, we can do things you know, over the cellular network and, and all these other things. One of the things that we have done is monitor animals and drug studies for uh, pharmaceutical companies. And so this, this rat here has got this little uh, blue backpack. Uh, and uh, in the backpack is one of these inertial sensors that has you know, six degree of freedom uh, measurement capability. And so you can, we've demonstrated that you can uh, monitor the activity of these animals and similarly sort of pattern match activities so you know what they're doing. And animals that are responding well or, or, or poorly to the medication can, can be determined. So this sort of thing has been done in this context, but could certainly be expanded to larger contexts. So where that goes possibly in the future is if you can combine sort of untethered sensor data, so any of the data that you're interested in collecting, uh, be, able to track, be able to track that wirelessly and, and all these other things, and, uh, and use that to just kind of reduce and improve the quality of care. So those are the things that we're interested in being able to do. So thank you. And
move on. You mentioned you're getting about one to two meter uh, resolution. It, what's the right. fundamental limit to the resolution? So uh, that's a, that's a dissertation topic. In fact, mine. And uh, <laughs> and um, basically, there's a number of factors. Multipath interference. So the reflections off the environment are the thing that really limit accuracy in indoor settings. But there are other things too. And uh, we we generally find that. Uh, you can do all right, but sometimes you're just wildly wrong. So, uh, but it's something to talk about. But this, it's it's a big topic. I have a quick question. It, so, from the diagram you had, it was uh, it was uh, two dimensional. You basically throw these up, they self assemble into a network, and then you can find its location. Right. Uh, are there limitations in 3D? Uh, if you work in multiple floors, uh, is there a limitation in how? Well, how that work? limitation is more or less that we generally build, at least in California, the floor structures as thick reinforced concrete. So there's very limited communication between floors. Uh, but no, we're not limited to 2D. And in fact, it is a 3D system. Typically speaking, when we look at a map, it's a 2D representation. So uh, that's, that's what we can generally show. But uh, you, you definitely do have the same resolution in Z that you have in X and Y. So in this case, do you have APs to facilitate the localization, or do you do pure uh, sensor-based localization? Um, do you have, for example, some access points uh, right. to facilitate? So uh, it's definitely, you know, you have to have a wireless network with some infrastructure to be able to do it. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about being able to do completely self-assembled networks where everything is moving around. Realistically, uh, it could work, but the accuracy is going to be going to be less. And you know, we're not talking about something where spending a few dollars is necessarily a problem. So you might as well go and put sensors in good locations that are going to facilitate you having a having a good system. So you just go ahead and do that. Now there are the identical sensors that you may use to tag devices. But it certainly can help to put them on the wall in good spots to help you out. And uh, that's something that we, you need to do. How do you power these things? Uh, well, so that's something that we have worked on for the last number of years is, is to get, OK, how do you power these things for long lifetime? So over the years, we've spent a lot of time developing low power sensors. And uh, currently, localization is a high power process. This isn't something that we can, we can do for a long period of time today. But uh, we're getting to the point where we will be able to integrate that onto smaller devices that have, have better performance. Now, just wireless networking, we've spent a lot of time developing networking protocols and uh, devices that, that can last many years on, a, on batteries. So you don't have to plug them into the wall. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You can literally just you know, stick them to the wall with some you know, double-sided tape, and they'll last for you know, five or more years sitting there, maintenance free. So um, it's a technology that's been under development and a lot of progress has been made. Thank you.